my name is John Dunn, and I'd like to talk to you uh, today about ADAS and specifically how microwave office and national instruments uh, are working uh, in this area. Now, first of all, what is ADAS? ADS, A ADAS is Advanced Driver Assisted Systems. Uh, what it is, is basically most people would call this automotive radar. It actually encompasses more than just the radar system. Uh, so it could also be guidance of the car, communications, etc. cetera. Uh, we will pretty much focus on radar here. And of course, what we are doing with radar on a car is essentially we're trying to detect objects around the vehicle. Uh, the speed of those objects, and then, of course, uh, avoid collision with those objects. And that is the essence of the hope of ADAS. Uh, it's a huge area. Uh, many companies are involved. The frequency range is typically now approximately 76 gigahertz. And the first thing we're going to talk about is, is what is the principle of an ADAS system and it involves uh, what most people are doing now is they're using FMCW, so that's Frequency Modulated Continuous Waveform uh, type uh, systems, and I'll be showing you a couple slides on that and how it works. Okay, well once you get the principles down, uh, we're going to take a little look at the hardware. Um, a national instrument has something called the VST, and the VST can actually simulate one of these radar systems. Uh, so you, you could uh, check out your system, uh, see how it's performing, uh, etc. So we'll take a quick look at that. We'll then be uh, looking at our software uh, at AWR. Uh, we have the product's microwave office, which would be for circuit simulation. And we'll take a look at that in uh, particular, uh, how the chip would be used on a board completing the system. The feeding the antennas, etc. We will also look at VSS, which is our system simulator. And I'll show you some specific uh, features of that for automotive radar. And then I'll finish up with some antenna simulations, because antennas, of course, are a critical part of any system like this, uh, because you have to transmit and receive uh, the weight. So let's get going. Uh, this quickly shows you the different types of uh, radar systems out there that we can use uh, with a car. I'm not going to go through all of these in detail, but you'll notice, for example, you see long-range radar and short-range radar. Obviously, uh, what we have to do here is be sending and receiving uh, radio waves in some way, detecting uh, the other vehicle and its speed, and then hopefully avoid a, a collision with the computer systems of the car. Okay, what are the principles of this radar? FMCW, so it's Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave. Why do people typically use that type of uh, system? You can see it here on the right. Essentially, they're sending out a sawtooth uh, frequency varying wave. So it's a continuous wave, and they vary the, uh, the frequency in a sawtooth, uh, having the frequency go up and come down. Why do they do this type of wave? Well, as you'll see in a second, you can detect uh, the position of the other vehicle this way. You can get its speed uh, using Doppler. And quite frankly, it's a pretty easy way to modulate a radio wave. So it's, it's therefore going to be more inexpensive rather than some more sophisticated type of modulation. Let's start with the position. Uh, it's quite simple, really. Uh, if you have the distance R, usually called the range by radar people, and you send the wave out and it comes back, you essentially uh, look at the time. And the time goes at the speed of light, divide by two, that's the distance. And you can easily translate this uh, into uh, the frequencies that you record. And you can see by these equations, uh, basically, uh, we can get the range. And so what we do is we look at the time going out, we wait a certain time, we look at the frequency coming back at a certain time, and we calculate the range. What about the speed? Well, the speed is done by Doppler, and uh, Doppler is a very fundamental physical principle. 
And uh, usually people will um, tell uh, the non-sophisticated the way Doppler works is that's why when a train comes at you, uh, the horn sounds higher in pitch as it goes by it it gets lower in pitch. Uh, essentially, the frequency is going up as it's coming toward you, according to the velocity, and it's going down in frequency as it goes away from you. Now, with this, uh, with this type of sawtooth frequency modulation, uh, we can calculate the Doppler. And the way that works, if you look at this little picture on the right, notice the sawtooths are shifted up and to the right. So the received wave you get back is not only shifted to the right from the distance, it's also shifted up from the frequency shift. And if you're clever, uh, you go through the math, and we can look now at the frequencies and back out the velocity uh, of the car coming at you or receding from you. So with this simple sawtooth frequency modulated FMCW type wave, we can get the position and we can get the velocity. All right, fine. So how do you, you know, measure this in the laboratory? You're building up one of these systems uh, and uh, you need test equipment. And this guy right here uh, from National Instruments is called a vector signal transceiver or BST and it's an entire system that you can program. Uh, you would typically do this with LabVIEW and then you have an FPGA which can very quickly record the data. It's quite popular out there in the industry. For the purposes of automotive radar <clears throat> we can program the VST to look like targets out there. Uh, their position and their velocity. Uh, I won't go through all this electronics uh, systems but the idea is by programming this VST, I can actually create multiple simulated targets and then we can test your radar system and see how well you're doing. At AWR, we make software. Uh, we make uh, circuit software and system software. Let me very quickly run through a couple of examples uh, having to do with automotive radar. The first one is a, it's kind of fun. It's a little academic project. And this project actually started at, at the University MIT a number of years ago. And they created something called a coffee can radar. And the idea was you could build a radar very quickly in a student type environment on a board using discrete components. And then you could actually uh, measure, you know, an incoming vehicle or probably more realistically. Uh, some type of simple ball rolling or something like that. Uh, the name coffee can uh, comes from the antenna they used was actually a little horn antenna made out of a coffee can. Well, we took that example and uh, we spruced it up a little bit uh, with more modern chips, etc. And we actually uh, built it <clears throat> and any student can build this thing and it is actually an FMCW uh, radar and it works and um, there you see a little simple picture of it and if you want more information on this just go to our website and we actually have an entire article on the coffee can radar if you search for that. All right, uh, real FM CW radar transceivers are not done with discrete components, they're typically made with silicon chips and you can buy these chips now from a variety of companies and it's the entire system on one chip. Okay, it's 77 gigahertz typically. What we did here is we took a paper from the literature. Uh, you can see the reference there on the left. And we actually uh, simulated this entire thing in our software. Uh, you can see various circuit diagrams down at the bottom. Pieces we simulated, for example, the amplifiers, the voltage controlled oscillators, the filters, etc. Uh, we simulated these and they agreed with the uh, stuff in the paper, the results, and this would be an example then of using microwave office at the circuit level and actually simulating a CMOS silicon chip radar system. Target and channel modeling in VSS. Okay, VSS is our system simulator. So we're moving up now from circuit simulation you have this, uh, typically you've bought or, or built this radar chip, this CMOS chip. You're throwing it on a board, and now you're worried about the whole system. So you're worried about getting things to the antenna, making sure that looks right. 
you're worried about the channel path from the car to the vehicle. You might want to model that. So you've got uh, things like uh, delay. You've got things like distortion going on, uh, multipath, phase fading, etc. Typical radar type problems. You would normally look at all this in a in a system simulator, and VSS is uh, how we do that. And you see that right here. And this example right here is for a radar system. I won't get into the details, but these elements have things in there like multipath you can model. Uh, you would be modeling the delay, uh, the radar cross section, etc. So from this, you can start looking at the um, various radar issues uh, going on. This example right here, another component of the system, is the antenna array. This is an, would be a typical antenna array that would be used in one of these radar systems. You want an array that has an uh, antenna system that has reasonable directivity and yet is, quite frankly, inexpensive to build. So typically you're looking at printed type arrays. Uh, they could be scanned. Usually they're not, uh, again, in the interest of keeping it simple and inexpensive. This is an example we pulled from the uh, literature, and uh, we ran it in one of our electromagnetic simulators. This was Axiom, our planar simulator. We also have Analyst, our 3D simulator. Uh, the planar simulator works quite well on these. Uh, they are planar arrays. We're modeling the currents on the patches, and this is out in open space. Uh, there is no box here. And so it's quite an effective tool, Axiom, to model this type of thing. Here we are back in the system simulator, and we're going to talk antennas now. So we just saw antennas at the EM level. And now at the antenna level, excuse me, the system level, the circuit designer wants to include effects of the antenna array, which is quite important uh, for these uh, automotive radar systems, also quite important for 5G not the subject of our talk today, but communication systems are going to be re relying a lot on phased arrays, and uh, you want them in the system, not just at the circuit level. So here is our system simulator. You see the source on the left, you see the load on the right, and you see this thing called uh, phased array uh, element. Of course, the channel is giving us the properties of the channel, the multipath, etc. And then we have this receiving antenna array. If we dig down into the phased array element, uh, you can see here we have a number of elements in it. Each one of those little boxes is an antenna element. Uh, and if we dig down into it, you can see uh, each one of those elements, for example, could have filtering, amplification. We could be amplifying each element at the element, possibly, uh, filtering, and um, of course, the antenna property. So you would be putting in actually the antenna pattern uh, that you'd be getting from the EM simulator. Here you see uh, the phased array text bench again in VSS. And as I just mentioned a minute ago, you can actually be putting in this thing at the system level now the antenna patterns. You see one on the right. These, of course, would come in from our EM simulators. Uh, we could do stuff like uh, say we had a rectangular n by m set of arrays. Let's think 8 by 8 phased array. We could actually look at an element failure analysis. We could be doing tapering the array so we're exciting the inner elements more than the outer. Standard things that an antenna uh, designer would want to look at and you can plunk these directly into the system tool and see how they affect your radar system. Final thing I want to mention uh, that we also uh, sell at uh, AWR is called Anson. It's antennas again, but it's a little bit different. This is actually a synthesis product. So you're working uh, on an automotive radar system. You're looking at antenna options for, say, the front of the car, the grill, the bumper, wherever you're putting these things. What type of antenna should you use? Conformal, flat. You want to keep it inexpensive, but obviously working well enough. Well, with Anson, you can actually pick a variety of different antenna types. You see some of the planar ones here before you, things like inverted Fs, patch antennas, etc. You give it uh, the software 
um, specifications, goals that you want to meet. You can see right there on the left, they're setting up the goals for the antenna pattern, side load levels below a certain level, etc. And then you actually uh, run uh, synthesis. And uh, what it does is it goes through all these different antenna types. Behind the scenes, it runs an EM simulator. And it comes up with the best antenna type uh, for you to use that can meet your specification. It rates various things. And uh, you can look at that. So it's a unique product on the market. Uh, it actually is antenna synthesis and uh, is a great tool if you're exploring, you know, what kind of antenna do I want? Do I want an inverted F? Would I rather have a patch antenna array, uh, maybe a horn? And uh, you can actually start uh, checking out uh, the trade-offs between them uh, with this synthesis tool. All right, I'm out of time. Uh, in conclusion, uh, everyone is working on automotive radar. It is coming. We at National Instruments and AWR uh, have a, a variety of products that we think contribute uh, to helping in the design of automotive radar. National Instruments has their uh, VST for simulating uh, radar, uh, these environments for automotive radar. At AWR, we make software at the circuit level. Uh, people can design their amplifiers, etc., as you saw. At the system level, we have VSS, our system product, for looking at the entire radar channel. Uh, it can include the effects of the antennas, etc. And, and then finally, uh, we also have antenna design tools, synthesis tools called Anson. If you're interested in these things, please drop by the booth. Uh, we'd be happy to show you more details. So have a great day, everybody. Thank you.